Well, I gotta officially thank from the podium uh, John Kane, Dave Bush, Steve Porzak, the entire events team um, for your support this year, you know, in 2017. Um, but all throughout the years, I mean, you guys have had my back always, and I really, really appreciate that. And the, the gentlemen I just named by name, I think I've told them many times how much I love them, and they're my three favorite people in, in Cutco Corporation. Um, so, you know, talk about all heart. Those three people are the definition of heart. Um, you know, and Steve Porzak from his message yesterday was awesome. You could tell he's 99% heart and about 5% good at math from that, that slide. So um, I'm going to just get it out of the way. Everybody's like, you know, those of you that, who I, that I don't know personally, I'm excited to meet you. Um, but everybody's like, okay, so where's the big black guy? Yeah, no. So <laughs> my name is Kareem. That was my birth, birth given name. And I, I do set off metal detectors because I've got metal in my, I got a metal plate in my hip, my knees. Um, my last surgery was just two months ago for my shoulder. It's all thanks to skateboarding and snowboarding. Um, but it really sucks when your name is Kareem Mohammed El Tawansi, <laughs> setting off the metal detectors uh, at the airport. Good times. Um, but so to, to, to just get it out of the way, I'm half Egyptian and half Swiss. There, now you know. So that's, that's why. Yeah, you're welcome, Pato. Um, all right, is everybody awake? Yeah, I get the fun time slot of the very first one of the morning. All right, we'll start out with some, uh, some cow jokes. All right. What do you guys call a cow with no legs? Nice. What do you call a cow with two legs? Lean beef. Nice. What do you call a cow that just gave birth to a calf? Decaffeinated. You guys are on it. All right. Um, let's see. Let's, let's really get the brains firing here. Uh, who's good at history? Yeah, oh, wow. Don't all, don't all jump at once. All right. What year was the war of 1812. All right. All right. I'm going to jump in. I think your brains are working. Um, Dave, in his opening comments yesterday, oh, um, Dave, in his open com comments yesterday, um, talked about that 10 years from now, we'll, we'll be looking back at our fair and show program, not remembering a time when something didn't exist, just the way we're looking back now at 10 years, 10 years ago, and it's hard to remember what it was like back then. You know, certain parts of our, our culture, certain parts of our business are just ingrained, and they become ingrained really fast. Um, so I do want you to know that the, the new program, the new leg of the company, and uh, this is news to the corporate guys, but I'm telling them too, the new leg of the company is cookware. There you go. Um, and, uh, and flash forward 10 years, when we look at events numbers, and that the cookware portion of that is, is no less than half of the total that we've done, and probably a lot more than half of the total, just coming from, from cookware. So, so I know who I'm talking to in the room. Who here has sold some cookware before? A piece of cookware. Okay, nice. That's pretty awesome. Um, who sold maybe five grand of cookware? 10 grand? We'll do a quick countdown. 15 grand? 20 grand-ish? All right. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now, who has the cookware at home? Okay, keep your hands up if that's the only cookware you own at home, if you don't own any other piece of cookware. No coated pan or nothing. All right, nice. We got a nice quarter of the room or so. Let's get that to 100%. Um, this, is only, this is the only cookware I've ever had in my house. You know, I started selling cutco when I was 20 years old, back when I had hair. And um, it's all I've had ever since. So, and, and I love to cook. And that's kind of what um, made me start selling the cookware a lot more. It's just when I started using it and, and becoming really convicted in how good of a product it is and how much it will change your life um, forever, for the better. Um, so today I'm going to kind of teach you a couple things. I'm going to teach you to, to love your cookware, to embrace it, to not be scared of it. Who, who's maybe had a cookware order cancel? All right? They, they burn that first thing. They're like, this cookware sucks, right? Can't cook eggs in this stuff. So I'm going to teach you how to not be afraid of it. I'm going to teach you how to sell it. I'm going to teach you how to educate your customers about the cookware and how to use it properly so that they're not going to cancel and return that cookware. Um, I'm going to teach you potentially how to double your average order at the booth. You know, Josh did a, an amazing job yesterday of delivering the goods on, on doubling your average order. So once you're at that level where you've doubled it from where you're at now, those are the, the, the ones I'm talking to. Now you're going to double it again 
by just adding this extra layer into your business, that cookware. And uh, imagine dro dropping a, um, you know, a kitchen every event that you do because kitchens, really the, the basis of kitchens is a set of knives and a set of cookware. That's the foundation of it. And yeah, we have flatware and things like that, but I mean, your biggest ticket item, I mean, isn't it sexy? All right? Make sure that you, if you guys have your old beat up sample, spring for whatever it is to buy a new sample because this is your shiniest piece of swag in your bag, right? Um, and, uh, and you want it to look really good. If you, if you guys only have like one or two pieces in your cookware kits, or sorry, your, your fair and show kits, your events kits, upgrade it, get that whole set, get every single piece. That walk is amazing, such a sexy piece. You know, I call it the UFO, and I kind of do this funny move with it as I'm showing it to people. And, uh, but it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, my, my selling cookware career kind of started at one of the first FSM conferences. Uh, an amazing gentleman named Tom Restrelli gave a, a talk about it. And uh, he, he cooked some frozen vegetables from being frozen with not adding any water or anything. And I was like, Poof! and uh, And he just kind of gave a, gave a quick like half an hour about the cookware. And that really springboarded me into selling a heck of a lot of cookware. So I hope that, that that's what this does for you. Now, you know, to, to be clear, you're not all going to be doing this this year. <laughs> um, this, this is going to be something that will be rolled out slowly eventually. You know, we're going to test it a lot more this year, and eventually it'll be kind of like the federal program where people are handpicked and, and uh, taught and field trained and so forth. But the stuff that I'm going to talk about today is stuff that you can take into every booth and just one-on-one -on -one with your customers sell a lot more cookware. So you can take it into every house and sell a lot more cookware. You can go through your entire past customer list tomorrow and sell a lot more cookware. Um, so you guys excited for those goods? Yeah. All right. So let me share my, some personal stats here. From 2016 at the LA County Fair, um, I had a total of 211 orders. And I sold 101,346. So not, not bad stats, right? Um, my biggest day that, that year at that fair was 12,950. I was bummed because I wanted to have, have a 15K day at the booth, which I had never done. Um, but then right after that in October, I went to Maui County Fair, which is a really small county fair, and sold about 16 grand that day. I was excited about that. But so in 2016, my average day at the booth was $5,334. Um, and then we got a call in December of 2016 uh, 16, and they said that a sponsorship opened up for cookware. And this is something that, you know, this was not an idea that just fell into my lap that day. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a decade, and that we've been trying to get into the LA County Fair with a cookware booth for a decade. So that was an exciting phone call for me, um, but there was a lot to consider, and it took months um, until I could convince myself to, to, to try, try this out. You know, I mean, the year before, I'd profited $50,000 in the 19 days of the, the LA County Fair. And I was now looking at, instead of profiting 50,000, I was looking at starting the LA County Fair in 2017 at minus $60,000. Because the sponsorship booth, it's a sponsorship category there, and, a, and the, the booth that I got was 40,800. And I was not splitting that with a team of people, I was splitting that with me, myself, and I. Um, and then I had to build a booth, and you know, furnish it, and get 40 chairs, and so on and so forth. So it was a pretty daunting thing. <clears throat> And luckily, I have an amazing wife, Dana, um, who, who was behind, behind me all the way. And I probably wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for her encouragement. So in 2017, um, I actually sucked. I got uh, 21 orders less. I got 190 orders only uh, instead of two, 211. But those uh, 190 orders total up to 163,593 in 19 days. Um, so... My first Saturday, right, Saturday is what's your biggest day at most shows? Saturdays, right, especially opening weekend for us is Labor Day weekend, huge, huge, and, um, you know, usually, like, it, I was used to selling about 8 to 10K that day at least. Um, I sold 3033 It was exciting. Um, especially exciting when I knew I had a $60,000 debt looming over my head. Um, so... Uh, to give you some perspective, I, it was a big, big learning month, and, uh, and I'm excited to be able to shave that learning curve for all of you. Um, but the last Saturday of the fair, I sold 23085 um, biggest day of my career. Um, and so my average per day that, uh, for 2017 was 8610 But what you need to understand is that that average is comprised of me sucking, <laughs> like, for the first three weeks, 
right? It, it, things really didn't start clicking until that very last week, and that last week really saved me. It was, it was literally like the last four days of the fair that I had to profit. The rest of the fair was, was paying down debt. Um, so I'm going to kind of shave your learning curve um, and, and get you from point A to, to, somebody said yesterday, to Z, not to point B, a heck of a lot quicker. <clears throat> I looked up some stats about KitchenCraft because they're one of our biggest competitors right now. Um, you know, Salad Master sells a lot of uh, a lot of cookware, but they uh, they're hardly ever at shows, so it's mostly KitchenCraft. And uh, and they kind of have like different titles, just the way we do. Um, so their average sales associate, um, this was based on 28 salaries that were reported. Um, their average sales associate was was making 190,000 per year. Um, their average outside sales representative, and I'm not sure exactly what defines these these categories, but their average outside sales representative was making $250,000. So I think it's time we go work for kit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, here's the exciting thing, guys, is KitchenCraft is actually on the verge of, of going bankrupt. Not because they have a, a bad business model, not because they have a bad product, it's because our company here was built with legends like Tom Malik and, uh, I'm sorry, Dom, Tom Rastrelli and Roman Malik and Ed Reed, and then a new generation of people came in. You know, some of my peers that started almost 20 years ago now, and some of you that have started five, 10 years ago that are just redefining what this job is. And we have such a young energy in this room and in this company that's growing and driving the company. Well, these other waterless cookware companies just never got that. So think about the shows that you've been at. What, is, what do the waterless cookware guys look like? <laughs> right? They're all in their 50s, 60s, some are in their 70s. Right? They got the sweet Santa belly and stuff. Um, and it's kind of hard to sell really healthy cookware when you're, you know, weigh two, 300 pounds or whatever. But, um, but the, the best guys in that industry, they're, they're retiring. You know, um, the number one rep from KitchenCraft is a good friend of mine, Cab. Some of you probably know him from shows that you've done. And, uh, and he's six months out from retirement. By the way, he told me that in confidence. So those of you that do know him, don't say anything about it. And don't say anything to any of the other cookware guys. Um, another... another uh, Waterless cookware guy has been in the industry for 30 years. He's on his way out. He's one of the top guys in the history of the industry. He's worked for three of the major companies. So what's happening is this, this all kind of came to fruition at the right time, where the cookware guys that have dominated this market for years, they're all disappearing. And now we have a product that we've had forever that 99.9999% of our customers don't even know we make. You guys see the opportunity that's on the table? It's huge, huge. And you know, with the average orders, like my average day when I sucked, I'm really excited to go out and do it this year because this the, last year was just all about figuring stuff out. You know, uh, I mean, I, I worked on writing a script for six months and then day one of the fair, 80% of that was scratched, you know? So um, we've got some, some big, big numbers coming up. Um, you know, imagine when it's, it's we're, we're, we're not far off when it's not just one or two guys that are, are selling 750 grand a year or, you know, a million like Trevino did the, the, um, a couple of years ago. But, uh, but where that's the norm, you know, I mean, the, the top, the people in this room are all selling half a million to a million, million dollars per year. That's just what people on the events team do, right? So um, I'm going to stop promoting and get into some teaching here. <laughs> All right, so let's, talk, let's, let's do some actual like, features and benefits here. Um, let's talk about some common cookware. You know, stainless has become really popular in stores, stainless cookware. Um, and the reason why is because a lot of people, uh, there's a big common understanding now that coated pans just are not good for you. Um, so you'll, you'll find stainless. Now, the problem with stainless steel is that it's actually a very poor conductor of heat. It doesn't spread heat evenly. Um, and... Uh, and then because of that uneven heat distribution, you get burnt spots and things like that. So the, the best way to explain that just to, to a person is, uh, hey, Mr. Jones, have you ever tried to cook like a, a thing of um, bacon and the middle right under the burner, that part's cooked, but the outside edges of the bacon aren't cooked, right? Because you're going to find that with thin pans in general and definitely with just stainless steel pans. In fact, Mr. Jones, see how we have stainless on our frying pan? That's because it, it barely gets warm to the touch, even when it's on the stovetop, because that's how poor of a, a heat conductor it is by itself. Now we've got that aluminum core on the inside. Um, copper. Copper pots and pans are beautiful. Excellent, excellent heat distribution. They heat quickly. They cool quickly. They heat evenly. Um, does anybody own a copper pan? Pot, pan? Right? They look beautiful for about the first use, 
right? Then they start getting really ugly, like, a, like an old penny in circulation, right? But then what happens is you cook some pasta sauce. And the, the, the acidity from the tomatoes, it does a beautiful job of cleaning up that copper. And so this copper that's all tarnished and looks like an old penny, all of a sudden it's beautiful and shiny again. Well, guess where all that stuff went? Yeah, right in that pasta sauce, secret recipe. Um, glass, Pyrex cookware, that stuff is fragile, can break easily, um, doesn't he heat, doesn't conduct heat evenly, so you get a lot of hot spots and therefore food sticks and burns in certain places. Um, now, aluminum is a really good conductor of heat. Your, your best conductors are going to be copper and aluminum. And in fact, all good cookware you'll find has one of the two. A lot of them just have a slab across the bottom. Um, but as you guys know, we wrap ours all the way up the side. Um, but um, by, its, by itself, uh, aluminum, it reacts with a lot of things. Acidic things, it'll pit, corrode. Um, and aluminum has also been linked to you know, a lot of long-term health problems and, and things like, um, what's, what's the one? Oh, thank you, I forgot. Um, <clears throat> all right, so cast iron. Um, grandma's old cast iron skillet. Um, they're, they're great because beautiful heat retention, they heat evenly, um, and the flavors that come out of there are amazing, right? The, the great thing about a, a cast iron skillet is that you never wash it. Isn't that awesome? Right? And the reason why is because it's seasoned. All the grease, it's a very porous metal, and so all the grease gets in there. Um, in fact, uh, if you've ever seen an old cast iron pan, the outside of the pan has that same crusty layer that the inside has. And that's literally food and oil and grease going, traveling through the wall of the pan to the outside of the pan. Right? And you have people that are like, oh, man, that's the one skillet. Like, that just, it, it tastes just like grandma's cooking. That's because you are eating grandma's cooking, and grandma's been gone for two decades. Right? So take a paper towel, wipe it across that skillet, that pan, and just look at that. Right? And it's, it's brown, literally. So now, by the way, everything, the way I'm saying it to you guys right now is the same way I say it in my presentations. So, you know, a lot of this, you, you, you probably know a lot of this material already. In fact, you can just grab our features and benefits. But what I hope you guys are getting out of this is a few, like, oh, that's how he phrases it. This is how he presents it to the customer, you know, and puts it in a lighthearted way, but where it really sinks in with the customer, right? Resonates with them. Um, and then, of course, coated pans. And, you know, every couple of years, they make a new version of a coated pan, and then they outlaw it, right, and they, they try, try again. So, you know, that Teflon, it's beautiful. At first, it works amazing. Your egg slides right off, and then it becomes Teflon. And uh, I think it was Seth that said yesterday, you know, you, you serve up the eggs, and they're like, oh, you put pepper in it? And you're like, nope. That's just, oh, yep, that's the Teflon. All right, so coated pans. The one thing about them is that every single version that has ever been made has uh, been, that coating has been made with chemicals known to cause cancer. Isn't that awesome? We're cooking our food with chemicals on, right on chemicals that are known to cause cancer and then ingesting them. Wonder why the cancer rate's so high, okay? Now what we're doing here though, and, and by phrasing these things this, this way is that really selling the cookware, <coughs> the approach that I took is very emotional sell. You know, it's really resonating with, with families. You're going to talk a lot about health, living longer, and avoiding disease. And that's what our cookware does. It's an amazing product. You know, so Mrs. Jones, um, have you heard of, have you, have you seen the other side of our company? Oh my god, well, yeah, the knives are okay. Like, you almost kind of downplay them because they already love the knives anyway, right? But the knives are okay, and they'll definitely make an impact in your life. They'll make your, your life easier and stuff, but the thing that's really going to affect your entire family's life is our cookware. Have you heard of low moisture cookware? Have you heard of waterless cookware? <clears throat> All right. So <laughs> the facts about, some, I'm going to rapid fire some facts about um, the Cutco cookware. Um, one is like the, the handles, they can be put in the oven up to 350 degrees, for those of you that don't know that. 350 degrees is the number. And uh, you don't want to put them in when you're preheating because a lot of the newer ovens, they preheat like at 600 degrees and then turn off just to heat it up quickly. All right. So you want to put it in after it's preheated. Um, medium to low is all you need to know. You probably have all heard that before, but medium heat, drop down to low heat, that's all you need to know about this cookware. So I'm actually going to fire this up here and start preheating that right now. And we're going to cook some food this morning. Um, <clears throat> is anybody hungry? All right, well, those of you that sat in the front row, you get to try this stuff. <laughs> Gold star for being on time and front row. Um, 
All right, so what, what's our stuff made out of? Uh, the, the, out, the inside, what we're actually cooking on is T304 surgical stainless steel. Yep, got some of that in my knee. Got a plate and a couple screws right there. Um, and does that sound like expensive metal? Yeah, it is. But we use it because it's 100% safe to cook on. Um, it's non-porous. It's, it's durable. It's sanitary. It's corrosion resistant. Um, now, the outside is um, 430 magnetic steel. 430 magnetic steel. And we use that so that you can use it on an induction cooktop like this. Is anybody lucky enough to have induction at home? Oh, nice. A couple people. Yeah, I just got to start cooking on them, actually, with, uh, with the cookware show that I was doing at the booth. They're awesome. They heat up really quick. Um, does anybody have electric? Okay, who has gas? All right. You can just go to the restroom really fast, come back, we'll be here. Um, <clears throat> doesn't matter what kind of cookware you have. <laughs> Pato's loving the corny jokes. I call that my Kareem cheese, the bad jokes. Um, <laughs> see, they're so bad, they're good, right? Um, <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter what type of cook, cook top they have, it, it works the same on all of them. Medium to low is all you need to know. Um, <clears throat> like with anything else, though, we're not going to really hammer the features, you know, as far as like T304 and 430 magnetic steel, like that's, eh, you know, it's the benefits, right? That's really what you want to emphasize. <clears throat> so let's go over a couple definitions. Um, does everybody have their handout? Um, <clears throat> we'll fill in some of those definitions there. So medium heat, when we say medium, on a gas stove, that's where the, the flame is just about to touch the bottom of that pan. It's just kind of kissing the bottom. If it's hitting it and kind of spreading out, you got it up too high. If it's not touching it, you got it down too low. Now, on electric stovetops, you kind of have to play with it at home for a while. You, typically, medium is five or right in the middle. But, you know, every stovetop's a little bit different. So if you have it preheated on medium for three minutes and you do the water test, which we'll talk about in a second here, and the water doesn't dance, then you know that, well, okay, maybe medium on my stove is more like a six or seven. So you got to kind of figure that out. And induction, they're pretty straightforward. Um, so low heat on a gas stove is when there's only the blue flame. Just a tiny little blue flame at the bottom there is low heat. Medium low heat is going to be mostly blue and uh, kind of tiny yellow tips there. All right, so the dancing water test. Um, who does not know what I'm talking about? All right, uh, most of you know. Nice. So I'll, I'll just do this quickly here. Um, but right now we've had it. Oh, it's already. It's already ready already. Um, here, let me pour a little bit more in here. So what'll happen is when it's not hot enough, it'll just kind of sizzle up and evaporate. But, oh, didn't run fast enough. But, but basically, it turns into little, little droplets, and they dance around, and they'll, keep, they'll, they'll stay in there for a long time. So if you don't know, just go home and try it, um, and then you'll know. But that's what tells us that it's, it's hot enough and ready to go. Um, so the dancing water test, and basically that's after preheating it on medium heat, for uh, about three minutes, three minutes or less, depending on your cooktop. Um, what other definitions do we have here? The water demo. The water demo, this is if you're just you know, in a house, you're not cooking, you're not putting anything on the stove. You're gonna just put a little bit of water, and typically what I'll do is if you've, if you've melted an ice cube in the ice cream scoop, and you know, sometimes they'll get up and go to dump it out, you, you can just tell them, hey, leave that there, I'll, I'm gonna use that in a second. And uh, you just put that little bit of water from the ice cream scoop, and then Twist a little, little bit. What you're doing is, what you're doing is you're actually getting water underneath that lid. You're creating that vapor seal. So um, once you twist it, it'll kind of spin a little bit, and then you have the customer lift that lid, and they'll feel the suction on there. Has anybody, has anybody not done that? <laughs> never, never done it. All right. So go ahead and lift the lid. Right. Simple demo. He said, oh, that's wild. <laughs> all right, and the next one I'm going to show you is the, the lighter trick. And what I used to do, um, and all this stuff is stuff that Tom Restrelli taught me a decade, decade and a half ago or so at the FSM conference. But um, what? Um, <clears throat> what I used to do is keep a little matchbook from the liquor store in my sample kit. And uh, you're going to basically keep it under there. Yeah, awesome. So you're going to keep it under there for about 20, 30 seconds. And as you're, um, 
as you're, you're doing it, you're explaining to the customer, Mrs. Jones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this away. I'm going to leave it here for about 30 seconds. I'm going to pull it away. And if this burns you, you can have this pot. And Mrs. Jones, this pot, this is like a $500 pot. You know, it's not actually $500, right? But I like saying that right then, just a little price positioning, kind of freak them out. So, oh, awesome, thank you. So you're gonna keep it just kind of right under the edge right there and go for the full 20, 30 seconds as you're explaining to her, you have her touch it, and it's not hot. And they're like, oh, wow, so it won't burn you? The outside doesn't get hot? No, that's not what's, that's not what's happening here. What you're showing them is that that aluminum core does it immediately, instantly starts to um, spread that heat. So instead of the heat staying focused right there the way it would with cheaper metals, it instantly spreads it to the entire surface area. So if we were to actually measure, maybe the entire pot would have gone up by one or two degrees. Does that make sense? And so that's, that's the a really simple, easy way to show them how that core works. All right. We just got this cooktop, and it's giving me error readings. I don't know. Um, where's Dave? <laughs> Pato, can you be my lovely assistant? Please welcome Vanna to the stage. <laughs> Find out what E7 means, error seven, because I want to cook some food. All right. <clears throat> so who's a buyer? For, oh, let's actually do the carrot test in the, in the meantime. I wonder... E7. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Perfect. Wouldn't be a cooking show if stuff like that didn't happen. And this stuff will happen for those of you that eventually do it on the big stage in front of uh, a whole bunch of people. So in the meantime, we're going to do a little carrot test here. And by the way, in the home, um, as you're doing all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, talking about the cookware and, and the stuff we've talked about so far, you're using all the different products that we have. So if you actually are doing uh, cooking with the customer, you want to actually cut all this stuff with them, have the customer do the cutting. Um, so you have the customer peel some carrots here. Actually, let me go right here. And let them see how amazing the peeler is. You can show them this little trick that I learned from a customer of mine, you know, to peel the end off so you can make carrot sticks without needing a knife, but also you can keep doing that and shoot these little salad discs into your salad. I mean, carrot discs into your salad. But you just want a, a bunch of peel and some of the actual meat of the carrot. Now we're going to take that and stick that in some water right there. This is root, uh, actually cold water. Same stuff that's on your tables. So, now I put it in just now. And what's already happening to the color of that water? It's turning orange. And what is that? Vitamins. Specifically what vitamin? Water right, water solubles, but yeah, mostly carotene, right? And carotene is the precursor to beta carotene. Our body metabolizes beta carotene. And uh, and that's good for it's good for your skin, it's good for your nails, um, it's good for your ha your hair. Um, so all sorts of good stuff. But when we're cooking it, right, if we're cooking it in water, we're washing that right out. Now this is at cold, this is actually cold water. Usually you want to use room temperature water. <coughs> but imagine if we were doing it with uh, with 210 degree boiling water. How many vitamins that would strip out, right? So that's a quick demo to kind of simply show people the way that you're cooking your food right now is defeating the purpose. You know, has anybody heard of rawtarian? Being a rawtarian, it's people that only eat raw food. You know, Joe Utley was a guy in our company a while back. He became a rawtarian, and I mean, healthiest people ever because they're getting every single vitamin, mineral, and nutrient that that's in the food that they eat. Um, and a lot of your vitamins, minerals, nutrients will start breaking down at about 180, 190, 200 degrees. Um, like in corn, the, the first two things to break down are the natural sugars and the natural salts that are in there. 
happens right around 200 degrees. And so, you know, you, you eat some healthy corn, right, but you just took out all that sweetness. So what do we do? We butter it up to get some of that sweetness back in, right? And then we took out all the natural salt. So what do we do? We salt it up to get that salt back in, right? And then you go to the doctor and he, he's like, oh, you're pre-diabetic, you know, you got to start eating more vegetables. So you go home and you cook, you boil your carrots, right? And then you pour out that water down the sink, you eat what's left over. But now how do those boiled carrots taste? So what do we got to do with those? Maybe a little butter, maybe a little brown sugar, right? And then you go back to the doctor three months later and he goes, oh, I thought we had a conversation. I thought you were going to eat better. He's like, and you're like, I've been eating a ton of vegetables, right? So you see this vicious cycle? Now, by the way, the reason that I use that, that corn one specifically is because normally you want corn in this. Corn is one of the most awesome things cooked in this cookware. Um, it comes out so sweet. You've never had corn that sweet until you've tried it in the, in the cuckoo cookware. Um, it's amazing stuff. All right, let's see if we're in business here and got no more E7. Yes. Now we've got to reheat re, uh, that up. All right, so let's talk about your display in the booth. <laughs> your display, what you want to do is have a... Have a lot of your display out, a lot of your pieces out, but also have some of your stuff stacked. Have the lid flipped over like that. Maybe have your skillet sitting on top of there. You know, and if you have the entire collection, you know, my entire collection at home fits in two cabinets. And my wife also has a salad spinner in there and a spiralizer. And just, you know, in, in one, one cabinet, two doors. Right, so everything stacks and nests like that. And you want to show that to the customer so that uh, it's not a space issue. But make sure you have a lot of cookware out because, like I said, it's one of your most blingy products, right? And have a spotlight, too, that, that lights it up. Um, really, in general, for your booths, if you don't have some sort of lighting, that's one of the easiest things to add to your, to your booths that will spruce things up. Get that light. Make, let, let people see what's going on right there. But also, it's like bling, right? Um, <clears throat> then you want to get a mantle piece for your booth, a beautiful mantle piece. <laughs> what I did is I got... Uh, a little glass, uh, well, acrylic, so it didn't break, but uh, just a little kind of like four by four jar. And I filled that thing to the top with some uh, butter, with some manteca, for those of you that make your refried beans, that's lard. Um, then I topped it off with a whole bunch of different oil, and I had that thing si sitting at my booth. And, uh, and it, it's a real visual display of the stuff that we eat. And it's pretty awesome when you hold that thing up and you go, Mrs. Jones, would you be grossed out if I told you that this is how much fat, like this kind of stuff, that the average American consumes per, per year? No, per month? That'd be pretty gross? That'd be a little reality check? Well, don't worry, it's not. In fact, <clears throat> the, uh, so a famous nutritionist named Bonnie Liebman, she actually created the dietary report card um, for the Center for Science in the Public Interest, but she said that the average person eats 20 pounds of fat, fats like that, per year. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not 20 pounds. 20 pounds more fats per year than we did in 1970. Would you guys agree that the way we cook now is different than, you know, mom and dad did back in the day? Absolutely. And for the most part, has it become healthier or, or, or less healthy? Less, by far, right? And the nice thing is there's a shift in society right now where, you know, everybody's kind of moving more to consciousness about health. Oh, are you kidding me? E7, all right. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some food in here because that's gonna cool it down. So we're preheated, we're ready to go. And you wanna show them, no butter, no grease, no oil. What do I have in there? Absolutely nothing. Now, as you throw your chicken down, you wanna make sure you get it right the first time. And then I always go, oh, shoot, I messed up, it's stuck. No, I'm just kidding, we're just searing it. Um, and you kind of explain the benefits of searing your meats anyways. Any good meat cook will always sear their meat. Lock in those juices, get those caramelized flavors, those Maillard reactions. <coughs> All right, now, actually, I need a timer. Who's going to be my timer? You want to be my timer? All right, so grab out your cell phone and go and set it for uh, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Because what this is, this is actually on the handout that I gave you here. This is the 3366 meal, or some of you know it as an 18-minute meal. Um, one pot, three-course meal. Um, so did you get that? Two, two minutes, 40 seconds, two minutes, 30 seconds or so? Um, so it's basically three minutes of preheating the pan, 
three minutes of searing, which I hope this thing does fire back on. It's still beeping at me. I'm gonna... We'll figure this out together. Um, but theoretically, if, you're, if your stove top does work, it's three minutes of preheating, three minutes of searing, six minutes once you get the lid on, uh, on, on that same medium heat that we preheated at, and then drop it down to low for the last six minutes. And you got your whole three course meal ready to go. <clears throat> So let's go back to the statistics here. Um, so the, the actual number of how much of that fat that people eat is the average person eats 63 pounds of fat per year. 63 pounds. And by having that jar, that glass jar, just have that like in your booth. Have it out next to your ultimate. Right? Think that'll spark a couple conversations? Yeah, not the sexiest piece, but that's going to sell you a lot of cookware right there. Um, so, but think about that, 63 pounds. Diabetes on the rise, heart attacks, high cholesterol, all, all, all the, the, the fun stuff that comes along with that. Mrs. Jones, if we could cut that down by 10%, do you think that would make a difference in your life? Do you think that would make a difference in the energy levels that you have? Would that make a difference in potentially how long you live? What if we could cut that down by 20%, 30%, 50%? Now, by the way, this is the, the, the way you sling this meal is that you're, you're going to make them fried chicken. And hopefully we can get a good sear going here. All right. We're in biz. Um, so again, connecting with them on that, that emotional level, really letting them think vividly. Like they cannot, they cannot not think about their health when you got that jar sitting right there. All right. Um, <clears throat> So then, and, and then this is a great time to kind of ask them some of those questions. Hey, Mrs. Jones, do you guys try to make healthy decisions, healthy food choices at home? <clears throat> Are you guys conscious of you and your family's health? You know, like really direct digging in questions, but you know, you'll get some people that are like, nope. Okay, well, let me show you how this, you know, so, so then you kind of shift gears. Let me show you how this is gonna get you in and out of the kitchen really fast. 10 seconds on the timer. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go just a little bit longer because it was turned off, but thank you very much. So actually, you can reset yours for um, six minutes, and I'll t but don't start it yet. I'll tell you when. We'll give that a little more time to see her here. Um, all right, so the, the, world's, the world's finest cookware just goes right along with the world's finest knives. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as showing the cookware in, in your uh, packages, you want to make sure that cookware is in all of your price sheets. You know, Vast Action has great, great ones with cookware right on there, with add-on options, the different sizes, um, kind of clearly shows what comes in the different packages. Um, make sure that everything that you're ever presenting to your customers has that. In home, on service calls, on demos, doesn't matter. You always want to show it, you know, you want to start with those high packages um, in mind, and that's how you're going to sell a heck of a lot more kitchens. And don't just sell an accomplished chef set, you want to sell the complete chef set, which is you know, the accomplished plus your big pieces, your, your griddle, your double griddle, your stock pot, your wok. Right? And that, by the way, if you add up every piece individually, including the barkeeper's friend and the, the DVD and all of that, um, the, the, and the kitchen tools, by the way, are part of that set, um, that adds up to $5,129. Okay, $5,129 is a, is a very complete set. And then regular price is 4493. That's 4493 and that's just an accomplished chef, those extra pieces and the kitchen tool set put together. Um, and then if you want to give them the kitchen tools for free, that brings it down from, to 4205. So almost $1000 off of the full retail price. All right. Now by the way, the, the chicken will stick at first. Um, but once it has a good sear on it, you can just kind of gently prod it from the sides and it'll pop right off. So yeah, this one was kind of partially touching but let me get this other one up so you can see our nice, beautiful sear on there. Now, when I tell people that I'm going to make them fried chicken, what I also have in the booth is a container of Crisco. Okay, so how, how's that fried chicken looking? Pretty pretty? Yeah, that's pretty pretty. Um, okay, so put that on your list of things to get for your booth is a container of Crisco shortening. Now, by the way, what, what you want to do as you're cooking here is throw all your harder vegetables down towards the bottom of the pot, your carrots in this case, 
Um, then I'll throw my corn on top of that. Normally we didn't have corn, corn here. But and throw your softer veggies up top. And you want to make a nice, beautiful, beautiful presentation here of colors. And I always talk about, you know, as I'm typically on a normal presentation, I'll talk about the different vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you get from the different vegetables we're throwing in there. Um, <clears throat> and then finish her off with some apples. So we've got this pot just exploding, overflowing with food. And then I'll, I'll make sure that they see it. You know, and, and typically, like in the cooking shows, I would walk around every single aisle, let, let them see all the colors in there, get some red bell peppers in there, some red cabbage, things like that. Your reds are your healthier. They have a lot more vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Um, you guys know the difference between a uh, red bell pepper and a green bell pepper? Anybody know? Yep, two weeks is the difference. Two weeks on the vine longer. Same, same vegetable. Um, and in those two weeks, a heck of a lot more antioxidants and minerals develop. So your, your more colorful vegetables are always um, have the most nutrition in them. Can you fire up that six-minute timer for me, please? Um, let's see. Uh, we got broccoli in there. You guys know the difference, or you, do you guys know the difference between broccoli and boogers? Kids won't eat broccoli. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So we got our meal going here, we got a th three course meal. Um, now another great one to do, like if you, if you really have your skillet, if you're in the kitchen, if you're there to do a cooking demonstration, is you can do a baked potato. How long does a baked potato take? 45 minutes, does that include preheating the oven? No, so more like an hour, you're right, depending on what temperature. Um, you're gonna do a baked potato in your skillet in 20 minutes. Okay, by the way, that recipe's in this packet that I gave you as well. Uh, we're not really going to talk much about that, but, uh, but my favorite thing to do is the, um, the pineapple upside down cake in the skillet. Um, it's awesome. If you haven't done that, I gave you that recipe as well. Um, but make sure you go home and cook. Now, I t I'll tell you what I tell all my customers is that you're going to burn some stuff. You're going to have a little bit of a learning curve. You know? and, and sometimes that'll daunt customers like, oh, so what you're saying is I have to relearn how to cook the way I've been cooking for 40 years. Um, absolutely not, Mrs. Jones. So if you still want to cook the way you cook with a ton of butter, grease, oil, water, you can. Um, just use lower heats. Because of that aluminum core, this is going to cook way better. In fact, the only time you're ever going to use high heat with our cookware, Mrs. Jones, is for boiling water. And the only time you're going to boil, because we don't need to boil or steam vegetables anymore, right? Steaming is supposed to be kind of the healthiest way to cook, right? If you steam carrots, what color is the water after? Right? The same as in that cup right there. Um, so pro tip, by the way. Mrs. Jones, if you're not going to buy this cookware today, I hope you at least get a little edumacation out of this. Um, so take that water, and instead of making your, your dishwasher, or sorry, your, your garbage disposal the healthiest member of the family, take that water and use that to make your smoothies, keep it as a stock for soups and things like that, right? Because that's where all your vitamins, minerals, and nutrients are. <clears throat> all right. Um, so how are we doing on the six minutes? Four to go? Oh, nice. All right. All right, so let's get, get into the next section here. Um, as far as selling cook, the, the cookware, you're not going to sell it by giving away a bunch of stuff for free. Because have you guys looked at the price list with cookware? Right? And, and I, I know I used to have that mentality that, well, hey, if I have a customer that's going to spend $1,000 on cutco, I want them to spend it on knives because I'm getting way more CPO. Well, this little experiment of mine this last year showed me that you know I got 21 less orders and sold way six, over $60,000 more CPO um, because of the size of the orders that you're gonna get with the cookware. But be aware of it. So I went through, and I'm kind of a, a math nerd, um, and I went through and, and made a spreadsheet of, of every single product that Cutco sells and line one to CPO. Um, all the other Cutco products as a whole average out to 89.9%. Uh, you get 89.9% CPO compared to line one. Your cookware, guys, comes out at 67.7%. Okay, so for those of, like, I see some people glazing over. For those of you that are not math whizzes, what that means is if you sell $1,000 line one to your customer of knives, then you're going to get paid on 899 CPO, assuming you didn't give anything extra for free. If you sell a, say, that same $1,000 with cookware, you're going to get paid on 674 CPO, right? And if you've looked at the bonus points on the, um, the cookware, don't ever give a piece of cookware away. All right? So 
Not to say that you're never going to give free stuff, but give other things. Give kitchen tools, give a knife, give an accessory, things like that. But what you're going to do is you're going to sell somebody, uh, Brandon talked about this yesterday, you know, not always having to throw in more stuff for free. We're going to sell using your sales skills. You're going to sell building value and, and the value of this cookware for your family, Mrs. Jones, and for your life and for your future, <laughs> the future of your family. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, statements like, Mrs. Jones, you know what's a, a, a lot more expensive than buying our full set of cookware? A stay in the hospital. Right? The average stay in the hospital nowadays in, in the U.S. costs $10,000. All right? <clears throat> Guess what the average cost of a, a heart attack is? This, come, this came, uh, comes from an, an article from the National Business Group on Health. Uh, and they you know, compiled all the numbers. They found that the average cost of a serious heart attack in the United States is $1 million. For a non-serious heart attack, is $750,000. Which is more expensive? Set of cookware or that? <laughs> right? um, so, um, oh, all right. So, see how steam's escaping here? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that already. And this is again where you kind of have to get to know your stovetop. And, and as you're doing these cooking demos in the home, make sure that you're explaining to your customers. Mrs. Jones, every, every cooktop's a little bit different. Um, so, we're going to figure this out together. Um, so, by the way, go ahead and reset it and give me another six minutes and let me know when that's done. Thank you. Um, so, guys, like, the, the first full set of cookware I ever sold, I was field training somebody, and I baked a cake on their stovetop, um, and it was just like a regular chocolate cake, I didn't have time for the, to, to go out and buy all the pineapple upside down stuff, and, uh, and I checked it after about 25 minutes, and it was still far from being done, and so I turned it up just a tiny bit, and then checked it in about five minutes after that, and looked great from the top, and the bottom was completely burnt to the bottom of the skillet. So when I went to flip it over, it just kind of ripped off and, uh, and fell out. And uh, I was like, Mrs. Jones, let me show you our slicer as I'm taking the slicer to <laughs> take off the brisket that I had made. And, uh, and guess what? I sold a full set of cookware <laughs> because that cake was still the moistest, juiciest cake they had ever had. They watched it being done in 25 minutes. And I just kind of pre-framed the whole thing with Mrs. Jones. Just so you know, I suck at this. Um, but no matter how bad I suck, doesn't mean the product does. The product is amazing, right? So go ahead and do that. Give, give yourself a, a hall pass with your customers. You know, it kind of takes the pressure off of you, and you can just focus on having fun. And, you know, your, pressure, your, your customers, it's like, it's like you watching somebody on the podium, right? And, you know, you see the speaker draw a blank, and you're like, oh, come on, you got this, right? You're rooting for them, right? The customer's the same way. Get them on your side, and they'll be rooting for you, and it doesn't matter. It just kind of lets you, lets you mess up, right? Get some rallying behind you. Um, but I tell a story. Uh, and, and using that shortening, right, we talked about getting a thing of Crisco. Now, Crisco, the melting temperature of shortening is between 118 and 120 degrees. So what you do is, you, you, you know, I fire up, preheat it, talk about preheating it, uh, and in the meantime, I say, okay, we're going to make some, uh, some fried chicken here, and I'll get a big glob of, of uh, Crisco on the end of my knife, and then I'll wipe it on my hand. I go, we're not going to throw that in there. We're going to put this right here. And then I'll keep talking, blah, 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 and then I'll hold it up a little while later, and it's still sticking right there. And the point is that, Mr. Jones, this stuff melts at 119 degrees. So here, even on my body holding it like this, it's not sliding off. It's stuck right there. Because what we do is we have to heat this way up for it to melt. Then we fry our foods in it, kill them all. Um, then we eat it, and what happens to that oil when it cools down? It turns right back to that same state. So it's... It's hard on the outside of our body. It turns hard on the inside of our body. So I tell a story of, you know, when I was young, <clears throat> my parents had me start doing dishes. And uh, it was a Saturday morning. My mom made bacon. And uh, it was my responsibility to clean up the kitchen. So I went to pour the bacon grease down the kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah, everybody's cringing already. Right? So imagine what my mom did. No! we ya She's Swiss. So that's like her favorite little thing. we ya um, so, uh, so she freaks out, right? Because what would happen if I pour that down there? It starts clinging to the walls of the pipe once it solidifies in there, right? And over time, that pipe starts going from this to this to this to this. Well, does that remind you of anything else, anywhere else? Right? And who's going to charge you more? That plumber that costs two or $300 to clear that line out or the surgeon that clears it out at the hospital for you? And that's if you make it to the surgeon in time, 
All right? Now, by the way, hope you guys are writing down some of these stories, because this is, these are exactly, I'm not just teaching you here. These are, this is how I tell it to the customers, and this is how you connect with them on an emotional level, that this is a very emotional purchase, that this is an investment in my health, this is an investment in my kids' health, this is an investment in the future of my family. Right? It's awesome, awesome stuff. And, and you guys have met a lot of your customers that you know, are, are from middle class or lower middle class families and, and have a full set of waterless cookware from when they were 18 years old and they, they took two years to pay for it on layaway back then and you know, things like that. And they're like, to this day, this is my, my favorite thing. And I had a lady this year that she was, a, <clears throat> she was like in her 80s and she bought two sets of the cookware. And um, you know, one of those, you know, you tr kind of try to, try to judge what kind of customer you, they are and she didn't look well off or anything. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. How, wh why are you getting two sets? And she goes, well, I've had my cookware for you know, 50 years or whatever it was, and she said, I'm, I'm actually buying this for my two kids because I have a grandson that's eight and basically is in the weight range that, that a 13-year-old should be at. Right? And you can't run outside for more than a minute and things like that. And so I'm investing in my, my grandkids' future. All right. So a um, couple other tips here that I'm going to give you kind of randomly. <laughs> So the cake recipe is in there. What I would do, and what I've done in my career, is pre-mix a whole bunch of cake batter at the beginning of uh, your, your morning. And uh, throw it all into, you can throw it into individual Ziploc bags, or just throw it all into a container, and you can use your ladle to scoop out and, and get your me measurements that way. But whatever kind of appointment you're doing, Mrs. Jones, do you mind if I make you a cake? Right, and it's all ready to go. You just butter up the edge of the pan um, so it doesn't stick. And just pour that cake batter in there. You don't have to do pineapple upside down. You can just do the cake batter. And you just let that cook on low heat while you're sharpening their knives or while you're selling them a set of knives. And that smell starts to radiate throughout the whole house. right? And then at the end, after 25 minutes, you have this little mini cake. And I'm talking about just doing it in a little one quart here. You want to only fill it up about a third of the way. And you can play with this at home, find out the exact spot on your pan that you want to fill that line to. <clears throat> But imagine if you did that on every single appointment. Would that be an investment of time? A little bit. Investment in money? A little bit. Two, three bucks for a box of cake mix? Right? How, how much dividends do you think you would get out of that investment of time? Six minutes. Time? All right. So the, the payout of that, the second you sell one set of cookware, you've paid for more than a year of your time and the cost. All right, now here's the most exciting thing as you're pulling this stuff out, is the yellows are still bright yellow. Guys, once you have that on low heat, with the even heat going all around, you're cooking at about 165 degrees. So we're retaining all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients. What does broccoli usually look like when it's cooked? Right, like olive green, kind of faded out, like army fatigues came back from the war. Um, actually, this is what I brought a plate up here for. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about uh, the, the price positioning. So I gave you a uh, price list there that um, I believe Josh is the one that got this from a rep that he knew. Um, I, have, I had an older version. And I used to use, still use my older version. It was about a 15-year-old price list from Salad Master. And uh, it's awesome because the set was still 10 grand in there, their, their complete set. And I'd explain that this is you know, 15 years old. But one of the things I, I, I like to preface as I start to talk about the cookware with, with customers is that, Mrs. Jones, just like your knives, cuckoo cookware is not cheap. It's an investment. It's an investment for your family, for your health, for your future. Um, but what you will find is that, comparatively, it is cheap. Now, I don't think I can really get this to where people can see, um, but how much water did we add in there? Okay, let me, let me run down the sides here really fast. I don't know if you can see all that gravy in there. Sorry, I'm not gonna make it to everybody, but we've got uh, a good inch of the, oh, boom. Go, go, go back. Oh, you were, there we go.
There we go. <laughs> all right. Um, so all of that is basically just natural broth that came out of the chicken, came out of the vegetables, chock full of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, chock full of flavor. It actually takes up those, those, those caramelized browns from when we seared it, cleans up the pan like that. So the awesome thing too is that once we get this out of the pan, your pan is literally clean. <clears throat> now when I do the baked potato for people, you know, sometimes you'll have a little bit of crusties on there. And I love, uh, actually, let me put this on here so I can slice it. I love uh, showing them how to clean it. Because to clean it, you just put a little bit of water in there. And, uh, oh, Dave, did the toothpicks ever make it in here? No. All right. Um, all right, what was I saying? No, before that. Cleaning, thank you. Yeah, the point there is that you take your spatula and you just go like that and scrape it, right? And I love making a point of that, like making it really aggressive, right? Because what does everybody do? They're like, oh, because they're used to what? Coated pans, right? Um, and you show them that, Mrs. Jones, you can do this for 30 years, and 40 years from now, it's gonna, your, your pot is going to look just the way it does right now. All right, we're going to pass around some of this. Um, if we can find some toothpicks, which we tried to procure. All right, I'm going to put this one back in here for a second because we kind of undercooked that on the preheating there. I'm actually not even going to turn that back on because that'll just cook, putting that lid back on there. All right, so um, one of the things I like to point out about the, uh, the price comparison here is that Mrs. Jones, most of the, you know, always ask them if they're familiar with waterless cookware um, and, or low moisture cookware and if they've ever gone to a presentation or seen the price point because it's awesome when they tell, the, tell you the price. Um, and that way, you know, right at the beginning of your, your time with that customer, they bring out, if they bring out the price at that point, you go, yeah, that's kind of the going rate. Now imagine this is Cutco. Everything we make is guaranteed forever. You know you're getting the very best quality. So you can imagine what a set of Cutco cookware costs. Right, so now they're thinking 15 grand, 20 grand, right? Um, but as I'm presenting the actual price, I like to kind of explain that Mrs. Jones, every single other waterless cookware company out there uh, is a waterless cookware company, a low moisture cookware company. <clears throat> and, and by the way, you'll hear those, those terms kind of interchangeable. There's, there's no cookware that's truly waterless. So I, we call ours low moisture because that's more accurate. Um, but people that call theirs waterless cookware, it's the exact same stuff as this, just so you know. Um, but Mrs. Jones, we're a knife company. That's what keeps the lights on at the factory. That's where our margins are. Um, and so we don't need to mark up our cookware nearly as high as, as the other guys. So, and you can see, I'll just point out the very, the chef set here on that first, first page, just the way we do now, showing kind of like the individual piece by piece value. There's this pieced out at $17,672. But as a set, you can get it for only $9,950. And Mrs. Jones, is it worth it? Well, that's the same price as, as the average hospital visit in, a, in America. So what would you rather get for your 10 grand? An overnight hospital visit? Yeah, here, start with that. Now, um, I don't think we'll have to go too far because there's not a ton of food, but maybe the first two rows here. Um, start with this and grab two toothpicks because you're gonna want one for a veggie and one for chicken. Um, there's no double dipping, there's no wiping it off, getting the next one. It's just a communal plate here, all right? Let's keep it sanitary. Um, <clears throat> all right. So guys, as I wrap up here, um, you want to provide your customers with, with resources. You know, the number one reason that cookware will go back is just they don't understand how to use it. They get it, they crank that heat up to high, they burn something, and they, they get frustrated and they're over. So the very first resource you want to give them is your phone number and your, e and your email and everything. Um, now if you're not doing this already, I have myself saved as a contact in my uh, phone, in my phone book, in my favorites, and I have a picture in there, and I have like where it says company, I have a whole little paragraph that says, this guy's awesome, I'm going to call him for all my needs, for sharpening, for gifts, for stuff like that, you know, and then I've got a cheesy picture 
Uh, and so I'll share that contact with every single customer that I, I ever have. You know, sometimes I'll do it on the spot, and I'll have them take out their phone, make sure that they know how to save that as a contact for you. And if they, um, if I don't have time, if it's a busy show, at the end of the day I'll go through and I'll, I'll just send it. I'll send that along with just a quick. I have it saved in my notes. A quick thank you. Hey, thank you so much. It was great to meet you today. Make sure you save my, my contact info. I'm your guy from now on. As Mike Dawood says, I'm, I'm going to be your most expensive friend, Mrs. Jones. Um, <clears throat> but I am your friend for life, so anything you ever need, call me. All right. How are those veggies tasting? Hmm? Oh, they're gooder than a Butterfinger at a Greyhound bus stop. <laughs> there you go. What Pato said. <clears throat> All right, so have every single person save, save your contact info. You guys should be doing that already. Um, and it's just like anything else. You got to make them get out their phone and do it right then. Um, or at least you text it to them so that they have that. And, uh, and then it's a good idea, like for your cookware clients, to actually have a follow-up call scheduled, usually about three weeks after you sold it. right? So maybe they've had it in their home for a week, sometimes you call them and it's still all packed up in boxes. Sometimes they've tried a couple things and you want to ask them, you know, how, how'd it go? How do you like it? Are you, did you use butter grease oil or did you use it the way it should be used? You know, it comes with recipes. Um, make sure that your customer's trying those recipes. Mrs. Jones, try all the, the, there's only a handful of recipes in there. Try them all because it'll teach you how this type of cookware works so that you can apply those principles to everything else that you cook. Um, but Mrs. Jones, if you have any questions, call me. I'm your guy. And, uh, and even, it doesn't matter if you guys are brand new and you've never even cooked on this cookware. Mrs. Jones, I don't have all the answers. I'm kind of new at this, but I can get them for you. So call me and I'll get you the answer. You guys don't know how many calls I get all the time from people that are like, hey, so I got a customer and the, and the lid's been stuck on there for three days. So I, I told them to put it in the freezer, but it's still stuck, okay? <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of what you want to do, guys. Um, so that will happen, it will happen to you. Make, all you do is heat that, that pot or pan back up. Um, just happened to me recently that a customer called me and she had potatoes, boiled potatoes trapped inside there. And I was like, why are you boiling your potatoes? Right? If, if nothing else, just put a tiny, half an inch of water on the bottom and, and cook them that way. But besides the point, she's like, I've tried everything. I went online, I put it in the freezer, then it said heat it up. So I tried heating it up and I was like, try heating it up again. And, uh, and it was just a matter that she, it, the thing was full of water and she had to heat it up for a good uh, 15, 20 minutes until it came up to temperature, right? Because what happens is it contracts and that's what locks that lid on. Another key piece is don't stick that lid, a hot lid, onto your countertop because it will create that suction right there. And that's a heck of a lot harder to get it off. You can slide it off the edge or if you need to, you can get a lighter and just hold the lighter against the lid and heat that back up, right? But um, how was the chicken? Excellent. Pretty moist? Yeah. How was that, that, that flavor of the gravy in there? Pretty awesome. Now, one of the things I like to, to tell people is that, Mrs. Jones, we didn't season this at all. We kept, I kept it super simple because I want you to taste what food is supposed to taste like on its own. And you know, a good chef can make anything taste good with enough seasonings and salt in there. Um, but I wanted you guys to taste it in, its, in the pure. So did you guys learn some stuff today? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you my email. <laughs> I've gone back and forth on whether I was, whether I was going to actually say this, but I'm going to say it. Um, now, I, I kind of suck at returning emails, too. Um, I'm not I, as bad as John Cain with the 7,000, but um, you know, I've got a couple hundred always at a time. So it might be a while until I get back to you. Um, but if you guys have questions, um, email me. But the other reason that I, I do want to give you my email is because I want you to actually be my eyes across the nation at shows. I want you to um, look at the shows that you've been to that you know there was waterless cookware people, find out if those people are still there. Because what's happening is Kitchencraft is passing on a lot, of, a lot of shows. Lustercraft is passing now on a lot of shows. They're pulling out. That's why the spot opened up for, for us at LA, where I've been asking for it for actually 14 years. Um, and so I wanna, we, we, we want to start getting these things into our notes, into our database, so that when the time comes and we can unroll this, we know exactly the shows to go into, but also to get a sense of the market opportunity that, that's in our hands. Um, guys, at the, the last week of the fair, I averaged $11,240 per day. That last week when I kind of had things sort of figured out by then. Um, and you know, this week, or this year, I expect to go way beyond that. 
But assuming that we don't get, uh, get, get any better um, this entire year, well, in order to have a million dollar year with this program, you would need to work 89 days to sell a million dollars at that pace that I did the last, the last week of the fair where I was kind of figuring things out. You guys see the potential for what, what we're talking about here? Um, you know, how many events do you do per year? How many days do you stand behind the booth? Think about if you could put up 11 grand every single one of those days. Um, we got people across the industry leaving and leaving a huge, huge gap just waiting for us. And guys, we're not sitting there introducing this, this new brand name that nobody's heard of. We're introducing Cutco. And people walk by and they go, oh, Cutco, I've had my Cutco for blah, blah, blah. Awesome, so you've had, you have the full thing, the cookware and everything? Cookware, you guys make cookware? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, thank you guys so much. Oh, my email is cutcokareem at gmail. Cutco, that's C-U-T, just kidding. Kareem is K-A-R-I-M, I-M, M as in Mary, at gmail.com.